fucking shitty, shitty fucking fedora and go eat a dick. Previously on With Apologies. If you're going to come at me, come correct. If you're going to come at me, come at me with facts. Come at me with a debate. Come at me with with whatever it is that you you think you got me. I got him. Hello, I'm Beige Dingleberry, and it's time for me to make another amazing documentary that is in no way, shape, or form completely ripped off of subreddits like ONA or The Fighter and the Kid. I also, for the record, do not listen to a show they call Red, um, Bit, Bit R. I've never listened to it and am not influenced in any way. Is there anything you do like? Do like. Tonight, we dive into the world of a relationship guru slash online grifter. No, not Dante Nero. In fact, I have reason to believe Dante Nero stole much of what he knows from tonight's subject. No, not Patrice O'Neill. Tonight, we dive into the world of Rolo Tomasi. It comes from like the Black Phillip shit, but then that got turned into Red Pill, and then that got turned into the fucking Rational Male, and then Dante found that, and then the Proud Boys and MGTOW were birthed from that bullshit. It just it just keeps getting worse, Every and I want it to stop. It's it's entropy. Every year it gets more fucking disorganized, and it gets more Diluted. convoluted and fucking different from what the actual thing was. See, I think instinctively. Kind of like uh, when you pick up a stick and you look for water, when you're a geyser stick. Yeah. You, you instinctively found the source that Dante was drawing from. This is a red pill for the red pill community. Their heads might explode. I didn't, I didn't set out to do this at all. I just thought Rolo is a fool. Born April 2nd, 1969. Rolo Tomasi is a 52-year-old failed musician LARPing as a relationship guru. Rolo's family began after Lo's senior Tomasi got his girlfriend pregnant with an old keeper nigger baby. Alas, this lovely home life was not to last long as Rolo's father left his dog-faced ugly bitch of a wife for a woman with what he perceived as higher sexual market value. Rolo's mm, father okay. got a bitch pregnant and married that hoe. And then he left her for a woman with higher sexual market value. And I wonder, Rolo, since you preach this gospel of do you, boo-boo, do it for the men, and as opposed to family, it's more important to smash mad puss than, get, than have a family. Did you prefer having a stepmom with higher sexual market value over having your real mom? Oh, oh no, <laughs> nigga! Since that... you left your own wife and kid, did you prefer that as a child when you cried at night because mommy wasn't there? Like they don't actually like or want women. This is just a go our own way type shit. Like Rolo yeah. doesn't teach pickup; he teaches men are superior, and that's why it's okay to be alone. It is my theory that Rolo's entire career is a desperate attempt for quote, daddy to love me please. At the very least, he has made a career from reenacting his childhood trauma from a position of power, playing out the role of his father again and again and again. This can also be seen in his hero worship of the painter Gagant, who left his wife and kids to pursue his hobby of painting something Rolo claims to be quite good at. Again, I love that it's beige frequencies doing a porcelain accent. <laughs> I, I like Ian's, Ian's sometimes childish and, and immature references when he makes these things. <laughs> I figured, you know, if you're just going to color in a picture rather than find visual cues that would go along with what you're saying because you're lazy... And you don't want to be bothered to put together something of quality. If you're just going to color a picture, I might as well get a My Little Pony uh, coloring book out just to fill some screen time. Though my biography of Rolo's early life is based on his own account, there are some inconsistencies. Rolo's earliest attempts of worming his way into smashing mad puss 
came in the form of him joining his high school theatre group so that he could hopefully get a performance mandated kiss. Finding himself incapable of landing a role as a leading man, he dropped out of drama and began LARPing as a musician. So this comes from his actual accounts of his actual life. Uh, Rolo was a theater kid. He was part of the drama department. Of course he was. Yeah, um, that's not surprising anybody. At 14, he realized that girls like musicians, so he started learning how to play guitar so he could get laid. Like poison. Lane, I've learned from him that there are two kinds of alpha. Do you remember there was a news story about a kid who threw a party when his parents left and caused like $80,000 worth of damage, and then they made a movie about it? Wasn't that kid's name like Cody or something hilarious? Yeah. In his book, The Rational Male, he points to an interview Cody did where a news reporter came to ask about the party the next day. And he says, Cody, he's above an alpha. He's an alpha Buddha. He doesn't what? have to try. <laughs> what? what the fuck? He's what is, so is that alpha. Even he's transcended alpha. And he's not being alpha. He is alpha. He is pure alpha. This wait, 50- I don't understand. Why, wait, wait. Why is like a 16-year-old kid above an alpha? This 52-year-old man pointed at a teenager and said, that's something I could never be because that's, that's pure. That's pure instinct. After high school, Rollo's stepmother, an alpha cunt, kicked him out of the house for being, quote, 40 watt and failed at life. This is your mentor. This is your leader. This is the guy telling, this crypt keeper right here, he's the guy that you're listening to fellas you red pill addicts that hate women you he-man woman haters rollo looks like the guy from the labat maximum ice commercials if you (laughs) type in in labat maximum ice it's a malt liquor that's in canada type that in and then go to his fucking commercials i was gonna say that we know that he dyes his hair because that's his hair as it normally is but in his podcast it is bleach blonde Labat chills the beer to negative 40 degrees, and the ice is removed. For superior. The strong survive by becoming stronger. This lesson has not been lost on Labat. Creators of ice brewing. Now Labat Maximum Ice. Only Labat possesses the power of ice brewing. He looks yeah, like Michael he dresses Einstein. like him. And he's well, doing commercials for a $3 beer. It's basically, Ian Ellis, it's like a Coors Light commercial, except the, the Undertaker is doing it. Yeah, exactly. Like, like a really bad version of The Undertaker. It, it, it's basically like St. Ides. It really does look exactly like this guy. Wait, are you sure it's not the same guy? It's not the same guy. <laughs> are you sure? That looks no, exactly it's not, like it's him. not the same guy. And only ice brewing can create the bat maximum ice. Ultimate balance of smoothness and strength. Who says lightning doesn't strike twice? The most interesting man in the world is an alpha, but Labat Blue, that's an alpha Buddha. I'm not going to let you disrespect this beer that I've drinking before. Labat <laughs> Maximum Ice. You can get it right. <laughs> He's just hateable. Oh, look who's this in is the where chat. We've been- theory. Oh, Rollo's son. Did they? I want to know. Did they pay him well for those commercials? Because there was more than one. There were like (laughs) for the maximize commercials. Yeah, they were like. (laughs) I would like. I would really like to get him on like a stream and then just ask him questions about Maxim Ironside beer (laughs) or whatever that shit is called. Is it true it has less calories? This is where we begin to find some of the inconsistency in Rolo's telling of his own story. In some accounts, Rolo started as a wage slave at a guitar center and worked his way up to rock star sex god. In other accounts, he was a delivery driver, an occupation that he likely arrived at after seeing a make money quick advertisement on television. I filled this thing with a lot of the memes that have been coming up in our Discord and the big finale. Shout out to Sin. It's a callback to her joke. So shout out to everybody in the Discord. I love you guys. And I tried to put your work up here. 
I'm not stealing it. I love you, and I'm putting it up there. Look at this, guys. We got just we just got a few alphas on screen right now. Just some regular old pussy hounds. They're gonna tell Center... you how to do it. <laughs> Center stage, the one that looks like Easter Island. That's the head vampire. The and one that the... looks like the quartering. On one yeah. side, he's got thirty rock from the sun, and on the other side, he's got here's your sign. <laughs> I want <laughs> <everybody. laughs> Bill Engvall looking ass. <laughs> and Rolo's not allowed to stand next to the men's. <laughs> no. That guy in the middle, though, with the black shirt, the bald one, that is the emperor. That is the most evil dude on the planet. <laughs> you can tell a little bit about their game by the way they're dressed. So the head vampire, he's a muscly workout, ultra al- uh, alpha male. Uh, the guy to the right of him, he's got a pink shirt. He's peacocking. He's playful. He's an old man that's still hip and with it. And then the, there's the B- Bill Engvall looking motherfucker who's like, I'll pay your insurance. He's, he's got that simp game. And then we have Rolo yeah. on the bottom. <laughs> who uh, He's there for the woman hate, but he doesn't. He doesn't actually want a woman. He just he, he's there just to support not liking women. Right. If the person in chat who said he's been married for 20 years is telling the truth, why would this guy need to write a book on dating or the rational male? Like, what could a married a guy of 20 wait, years wait, wait, possibly wait, wait. have to tell a young yeah. dude about game? It doesn't make any sense at all. You've been married for 20 years. I, w- I want to address something, not to cut you off, but I want to address something that Lycan Theory said. He goes, this guy not alpha. I'm alpha. Said every beta ever. Did we ever say we were fucking alpha? Roll no, I actually <laughs> said I'm a sigma, which sigmas are respectable and in no way just as lame and cringe as alpha, beta, or gamma are. Sigma is completely separate, and it's really cool, guys. It's not. It's not lame at all. <laughs> yes. I want. So I got a question for Ian though. Like when I said that this guy Rollo was going to be the franchise quarterback, was, was I wrong? Because I'm still like, he's so fucking boring to watch sometimes that I'm still up in the air. That's the thing is, I'm trying to find the way to cover him. We got to distill this. We're going to have to cook it up like crack to make it palatable. Fair enough. Uh, Cassandra O'Troy is making me laugh really hard in the chat. And so she's being like, Sigmas are James Bond types. They're true lone wolves. That's like that Patrice bit. He's like, I do it myself. And I do it my way. <laughs> <laughs> You're not a fucking lone wolf. Sh- shut up. Just shut the fuck up with your dumb red pill garbage. Oh my god. What well, who's what man's not a lone wolf? What are you talking about? It's fucking <laughs> putting a hat on a hat on a hat. Just fucking quit it already. <laughs> Go fucking get your dick wet and shut up about it. Fuck. In still more accounts, Rollo worked in the corporate world of advertising. While he is happy to brag about his smallest in-studio gig as a musician, he makes no mention of landing any large advertising accounts. So his advertisement career is likely little more than spinning a sign for a company that was perpetually going out of business. He's posing like a girl would pose on like a calendar or something. Like he thinks this he's is... like cute and sexy here, bro. And he looks like a complete creep. Like a, would you? Like a complete Buffalo Bill maniac, bro. And he's trying to act all coy and pretty in this. It's fucking weird. His entire Instagram is, it's a public persona that he's portraying to the world, which is 90% of their game is like, how to manage your public persona so you have some distance from your own behavior so you can act civilized. This is exactly the kind of picture like my dad would ask me to take to put on his Facebook. This is a dad picture where he's flexing for his friends in like the, the church band. This is just uncomfortable. Yeah, Look, this is be, your guy. Yeah, I didn't, <laughs> like in, I didn't, like in theory. I didn't know You're in the chat. Like I in theory. Look at this picture and tell me, is this your guy? I need to know, is this man leaning on the truck? Is this your man's? Get your man's, Lycan. That's your man's? That's your guy? (laughs) This is uncomfortable. He's not even, he's not even like in shape. (laughs) Um, That's not peak 
Peak nutrition. But he's posing, not guys. He's right striking there. a pose. Look at him. Look, that's this is. Those are women's jeans. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. <laughs> this is the same guy that when he pulled up that picture last week of that thick girl with the guy on the beach, he was so focused on how fat and homely he thought the woman was and just how attractive and alpha he thought the man was. Uh, the a lot of guys will say, well, hey, I like big, big fat women. I are uh, like the brother, man. I mean, let me tell you some black guys. Oh, oh what? Look at, listen to the hot take on Rollo. <laughs> Book two, understanding the African community. But I'm not into like girls with huge asses, right? Like Cardi oh, B. Boss. God Cardi damn it. Over- God <laughs> damn it. I was just- worse than a huge ass. Sorry. I was mm-hmm. just about to say his insight to the brothers was probably some black dude was like, oh man, uh, you don't like a big juicy ass? And he's like, hey, hey, you like what you like. You know, it's like it's subjective. <laughs> big juicy ass. <laughs> Flat booties for me. No, thank you. Very overweight, like pushing obesity. But, but you know, the the bigger the cushion, the better the push. I guess I don't know. This guy's like, never had me, to settle. That's not like I wouldn't I put that on. Oh, we saw this already. In fact, this is actually a really good. Um, let me put this back up there. Like, I put this on here because this is a good image for dude. As you can see, he's ripped. He has that body type that that like women love, right? I mean that that sort of you know. Yeah, <laughs> just with the homosexual undertones of these fucking love guru guys. You see, he's ripped there, right? Clearly, an alpha, more alpha than me. The projection is insane, and he made this. This isn't a thing he found, and he's talking to me. He like put this together in Photoshop. Are took sure time. He- oh yeah, there's his name, Rolo Tom- Tomatsky. Okay, what is this? It, I don't know what this is, so you guys need to tell me what this is. He's sitting there going, "I like skinny girls with big boobs," and yeah. then he shows us a picture of a guy way more ripped than him, who he's admitting is attractive, with a thick girl with ass. What? The corn what fed is- blonde from the Dakotas. <laughs> exactly how mama how mama meant them to be raised and so i just don't understand this guy is, seems like he's into thin men a bit more than he's into to women based on this little collage he put together i mean that's fine i don't know if that makes you the rational male but it, it is fine yeah, i he's guess the rational male. <laughs> so i get it because rational men go their own way and to, to yeah. do that you have to be homosexual okay i got you muscularity that's got definition he's not too he's not so oh jacked God. that it's like you know he's a bodybuilder i mean probably works out but you know he looks like he's got <laughs> a his body maybe with water polo probably surfs most likely who knows right probably this water polo surfs i hope he surfs i'm really into surfers i want to learn how to surf <laughs> maybe he'll teach me after spending his 20s smashing mad puss rollo did what any young lothario would do he began hanging out with incels on message boards like So Suave and doing what he could to help less fortunate lads get their dicks wet. Feeling that his keen insights into the fairer sex was more than just a hunch, Rollo went back to university to pursue a degree in evolutionary psychology. Seeing that his ideas were too radical for the libtard teachers, Rollo appears to have dropped out before graduating to pursue a career as a writer. Look, I know this is a photoshopped picture, but that mm. is a real picture of Rollo. Look how cool that guy. Don't you think he's cool? Doesn't this guy look like a badass? Look at him. He's got oh, like yeah. seven lapel mm. pins. His collar's popped. I I Yo, he's about I to get black. So we just went past a very important point, which is that in all of his books, he's like, in my 20s, I was fucking all these girls, and then I started hanging out on message boards <laughs> with incels. And it's the same thing that fucking Jordan Peterson does. He starts his book going like, well, I, yeah, I, put, I put this list of 10 things to do up, and it was very popular. So I was driven to write this book. What is Which it basically who's... just tells people to clean their room and wash their dick. So both Rolo and uh, Jordan Peterson say like, I didn't choose this life. This life chose me. And I'm trying to disseminate these red pills, not to, you know, make myself into a hero or a martyr or somebody whose Patreon you should join. I'm trying to help you. (laughs) Is that around the time he got married when he started hanging out on the message boards with the incels? All right, so that's one. 
I'm starting to wonder like chicken and the egg, right? Like what came first? Did he get married and then find the incels or did he find the incels and then go from this pussy hound to getting married? And is he like writing these books now to relive his glory years? Is that what this, this is all advice from a guy that hasn't gotten pussy in over new pussy in over 20 years? He's a guy be. that's going to I'm wondering you like Unless you were an incel at one point in your life, why would you feel any obligation to educate or help them? <laughs> you yeah, were a that's born a really Chad. good point. If you were a born Chad, your your whole mo, your entire life is like fuck them. They're nerds. More yeah, pussy for me. Fucking bunch of nerds. Yeah. <laughs> More pussy for me. Then that's exactly right. how they would act. Yeah, it's they don't want to go back to that life. <laughs> <laughs> so that life that life scares the shit his uh his actual account is that he was a musician sex god and then he started hanging out on so suave and there's no he doesn't fill in there has to be a heartbreak in between those things there has to be a divorce or something that that shook him or it's all just made up horseshit like and in his 30s, he decided to go back to school, and he started studying uh, evolutionary psychology. Now, I don't think he ever graduated, because if he did, he would definitely put those titles everywhere. It would be Dr. Rolo Tomasi, PhD Rolo Tomasi, and not just regular-ass old man Rolo Tomasi. So, nigga, you went to school, you used all these $5 words to justify your horseshit, but you didn't graduate? Is this some uh, community college horse shit you're throwing at me? I do not think that writing horse shit self-help books that reiterate the same four bland red pill concepts over and over but again I mean, as being a doctor. No, I don't think that that. you ever heard him on his show? He finds every way to say something that takes two minutes. He finds a way to turn it into half an hour. <laughs> well, I mean, if that's what being a doctor is then may maybe he's the greatest doctor of our time do you guys ever have the book fair that would come to your school they would bring these steel cases of books on wheels and they would bring them in you could buy them Scholastic. Rainbow? Yeah. yeah that's a canadian one yeah yeah well oh, i feel like yeah. rollo spent a lot of time at the book fair not a lot of time <laughs> out playing with other kids a lot of time at the book fair so we're about to see his peacocking, and I shit you not, there is not a single picture of him with a woman. The rest of our character study will include a look at his Instagram post, as well as a quick overview of his writings in Sea Org terminology. Rolo's Instagram tells the tale of a man who has everything a boy could want, except for a woman. Rolo enjoys posing with guitars going fencing, standing near a snowmobile, posing next to cars he does not own. But don't worry ladies, this is not the first time he's driven a Lambo. Well, because he only has the wife, right? And so in his mind, how can you Show the wife! Right, no, that's the logical, that's if you actually wanted to peacock, Ian. He doesn't want all the potential alphas that follow him on social media to find his wife. Because, you know, his wife's a dumb broad. And if she's ovulating, then she might be uh, subject to leave him for one of these bigger alphas that might be stalking I, him on Instagram. I think he must be separated because his Instagram tells the tale of a single dad. That's true. Standing near a snowmobile. <laughs> <laughs> Why is he at shoulder level with the handlebars of that snowmobile? Because <laughs> yeah, he's like five foot five. <laughs> he's a manlet. So the helmet yeah. is like the size of his torso. Like he looks like he could sit on the gas tank while his dad like actually operates the <laughs> snowmobile. <laughs> Yeah, he should be holding somebody else's waist when he rides that. It's not safe <laughs> for him to operate it on his own. Um, if you can go back to the picture of him fencing, I just I wonder what you think of today's modern man. This sophisticated <laughs> <laughs> Could you have a more effeminate prince of a man stance? That's what I'm nope. saying. It, all of his posture is is like Teenage girl taking a selfie energy. This is his... Yeah, I said Proud Boy should take Salsa Wessons. Yeah, y'all Proud Boy should take Fenson. 
Lupe Fiasco, <laughs> yeah, you should know how to arm yourself with the sword. You know, fencing, it's a lot like dance. You develop a relationship with your partner. Yeah. Yeah. It's about watching their body and the ovulation cycle so you know when to strike. <laughs> Doro fencing, he was a Chad. I think fencing, much like gymnastics, is something that doing Doing that as an adult is only cool to the mind of an eight-year-old. It, it's like be like, I'm gonna wear a, I'm gonna wear a cape when I grow up, and it's just gonna be awesome. I'm gonna fucking own it. Like only someone that wants to be Batman actually does this as an adult. You don't He's, think Rollo is like at the fencing class, like getting mad puss? You don't think there's no, a bunch I, of young girls I, throwing I themselves at the fencing I don't know about class? Everything else? But I don't think the fencing class is the place. <laughs> <laughs> out of out of everything, you're confident that's the that's the one spot he's not getting girls. Who are you gonna run into in a fencing class other than effeminate European men <laughs> or gays? <laughs> Nat Clo points out in the chat. I wanted to say this too. When he when he has all of his leather gear on and his glasses and his beanies, he looks a lot like Rollo Joe Cumia Tom Misi. <laughs> oh, that's true. He's, he's got big cover band uh, vibes coming off of him. Do you think uh, To You was wearing his sunglasses under the fencing mask and his hat? <laughs> he took the mask off. <laughs> he put took his the other mask off. That's such a good point. <laughs> Wait a second. Wait a fucking second. How did you take this picture, Rollo? That doesn't make no fucking sense. So you are, there's two things that happened here. Like Ian's saying, he either took off the fencing mask and then put the hat and the glasses on, or he had the hat and the glasses on under the mask. Either way, he's a fucking loser. <clears throat> he's authenticizing the fucking, the fencing picture with the helmet under it. Like he's a NASCAR driver. Like he's got to <laughs> let you know he was just fencing. And this right. Is not okay. So I see there's a strap on the mask. So he like walks out like that's his perk. He's dressed like he's about to pump. You up. <laughs> um, there's no other photos of him fencing. There's no action shots. There's no trophy. There's no belt. There's only this one single picture of him one time going to a gymnasium to try this. Right. The, the one day he was even fencing. He's not even into it. And what he a couldn't. Fucking his scumbag. wife must have taken him to this because he looks like a dejected child. That doesn't want to be there. They're like now his mom smile, like, Rollo. <laughs> Rollo, we need a picture for Facebook. What it'll be loser. good for it'll be good for the manosphere. They'll like it. You'll get so many hearts. Once your hair start starts going gray, you do not need long hair as a man. You shouldn't push it that far. But if you happen to think you can get away with having long fucking uh fabio type hair well into your 40s as soon as that shit turns gray you need to stop short and tight gray hair looks distinguished it looks suave That's this how I long roll. hippy dippy uh greasy thin hair this looks like you're trying to hold on to something this yeah, is the crib keeper like you, you look like the fucking professor from back to the future you look like a crazy man <laughs> He's from the Max Ice commercials from the fucking 90s. <laughs> yes, he is. <laughs> he looks exactly like that guy. Ask, ask Rex, is Maximum I... Ice not the shittiest beer that you can possibly buy? Maximum Ice, you could buy like, we used to drink like fucking 40s of that because you could buy them for like four bucks back in the day. I don't know. It's, I it's nasty. I guarantee you this Halloween, he's going to uh, get some hair gel and spike his hair. Yeah. So the Halloween, I'm going out as Rolo Tomasi. Well, Rolo will be going as Rick Sanchez uh, because he is the Alpha Buddha of all Alpha Buddhas. I'll tell you, I'm going out for Halloween as Rolo from <laughs> Max Ice. <laughs> I'll tell everybody about how the beer's chilled at minus 40. Then we remove the ice so it's a stronger <laughs> beer. Yeah. Instead mm -hmm. of candy, you're going to give kids blue chew and date rape pills? Yeah. <laughs> blue <laughs> chews and roofies. <laughs> <laughs> and red pills.
I love how we have to accept that this is their definition of red pill. And if you don't like subscribe to the bullshit the fucking Rollo's peddling, you're you're a blue pill libtard. I hope you're not <laughs> complaining about them reappropriating uh <laughs> conspiracy culture. Um, <laughs> you sound oh. like a real libtard right now. I like what Rex said last week where he was like, oh, you think your feminist ideas are so edgy. Like, they have all these PG-13 uh, 10-year-ago ideas, and they're like, are you guys ready for the truth? Oh, these the world's bitches not ready. ain't shit, yeah. You're like, the world's not ready. Can we talk about the Jews? Uh, sit down, I've got some more chapters to talk about. I've got some more things to show you. The The rabbit hole goes much deeper. <laughs> this is a late comment, but Helen DeKeller said Lycan did uh, fencing classes with Rollo in the 90s, and that just made oh, me laugh. Oh, shit. <laughs> they, they had a whole Karate Kid relationship where they, oh, they're no. doing kicks together on the dark. <laughs> Sweep the leg, Jamie. <laughs> he calls him Sensei. <laughs> sensei Tomasi. <laughs> Rollo-san. <laughs> like it, like son. wax on, wax off, but he's fucking waxing Rolo's Miata. <laughs> Bro, you must show no mercy to enemy. Yeah. Lycan sounds like the kind of car that Rolo would drive. <laughs> I've got a Ford Lycan. Uh, a Lycan 360. <laughs> it's what we call a 2020 Humble. It has automatic nothing. The windows still roll up. <laughs> the Lycan Sigma class. Oh shit! Oh, so the beta beta get this transmission. Beta transmission. All right, Kenny, you've stepped on it. Let's get back to the movie. <laughs> Standing near a snowmobile, posing next to cars he does not own. But don't worry, <laughs> ladies, this is not the first time he's driven a Lambo. Pause. Aping the Insta. <laughs> the the Instagram stuff alone is so damning that he would even say that. <laughs> CEO. Um, I don't know if you're so, going to believe this, but Rolo went to a car show and literally <laughs> took dad photos next to all the cars and then bragged that one time he had driven a Lambo. This wasn't his first time. Wow, that's that's cool. He's driven a Lambo. I like how he, he tries to get ahead of the audience and be like, yes, if you, before you ask, I've driven a Lambo, which that's like a smoke screen, right? Because all that does is now you're having a conversation about whether or not he has driven a Lambo. When the real conversation I wanted to have was, that's not your Lambo, yeah. Wallow. <laughs> and you, you already, before you get to ask that question, you're trying to deflect. That's what a pussy you are, and that's how much you know what you're doing. He that's why even, this guy's disgusting. He can't even lease a Lambo. His wife won't let him. That's he couldn't even rent it. purchase. Even rappers can rent a Lambo for a thousand dollars for a day. Jesus, you don't have enough sales of the rational mail to rent the Lambo for a couple hours and take some fucking Tinder pics in it. The question you have to ask about these photos is who is this for? Now, a woman would laugh at this. This is for the incels incel. This is for the 14 year old. The, the man child that never grew up that is still impressed by like, damn, that, I've never even I've never even driven something that wasn't my mom's car before. He's doing this thing that I really find despicable. This guy has like developed this weird multi-level marketing pyramid scheme set up where he just you just got to keep coming back to buy my books and you got to keep coming back to my streams because you got to keep your game sharp because if you're not constantly studying on your acronyms and constantly practicing your game these bitches are going to leave you for a better and bigger alpha than you are so you got to make sure you come and watch me and i won't answer <laughs> your questions unless you donate me money so make yeah. sure you give me at least five dollars for me to talk to you like this guy is a fucking predator bro he's a piece of shit and he takes advantage of young boys <laughs> and makes them turn into little weasels like like in theory and that's am, how you I, end uh, up with people like that <laughs> yeah. am i the only one that thinks lane is coked up tonight <laughs> 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 you fucking no, I'm... your teeth like I will fucking bite him. <laughs> His charm level. <laughs> uh Dante has more charisma points. Uh and that's something that he has to make up for in his calculations of how to uh, kind of like CEO says that uh uh what is the baseball metaphor? What is it? Moneyball. Moneyball. Rolo has a moneyball approach toward being an alpha. 
So he doesn't have the charisma of a Dante. So he has to calculate to uh, accessorize his peacocking and his lifestyle choices to make up for the lack of a person that is actually there. But yeah, he went to that fencing class for the Instagram. He went to, you know, he went to go snowmobile, not for the enjoyment of snowmobiling or, you know, the enjoyment of fencing. He went there to be seen fencing on Instagram. Right. He wasn't at the Lambo dealership pricing out Lambos. He just wanted to take pictures next to Lambos. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. He's the first person to criticize women for doing that on their Facebook. Right. Such phony exactly. Bitches. Well, I bet that's you're not even you're on some rich alpha with good abs. But he, Rollo's always got to compliment how attractive the guy is for some reason. Look, this guy is just so ripped and he's clearly like an alpha and he's with this weird, homely, fat Dude. girl. And it's like, dude, <laughs> part of being an alpha is fucking whoever you want to fuck. So if that's who he wants to be with, why are you hating on his game? It's because he fucking is projecting some sort of weird. That's why he's like, look at how ripped this guy is. Look how fat this lady is. Like he is way more into the men so than he's into guy, any women. Well, I do like that you caught. He's like. I'm going to teach you how to get hot bitches like this fat, dumpy (laughs) bitch I don't like. But look at this sexy, sexy alpha male. Like he's more into being the guy than he is into getting the girl. Uh, However, when you look at this, you see an imbalance here. You see a guy that is that hot, that, that, you know, that ripped. Oh, shit. Fuck yeah. Hold on. I'm jerking off right now, guys. (laughs) I, I was about to skip ahead and I was like, no, let's let it go. Something just around the corner. You know, oh. he has that physique that that women love, and then you see a girl like her, and you <laughs> they have the sounds... physique that I women love. Yeah, he but... sounds like Brian Callen, like Brian Callen and fucking what's his face, Brandon Schwab. Yeah, they're constantly like, "Yo, dude, that guy had the best fucking pecs I've ever seen on a dude." <laughs> Watch him say something uh, catty, like she has like split ends in her nails, they're terrible. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Look at those elbows. <laughs> fucking pig. This guy's 60 with an outdated fucking look. You think he wouldn't settle for that bitch? Well, let me like, tell they, you. I <laughs> wouldn't exactly settle for that bitch. That this guy's above thick, fucking that woman. You know what that I mean? thick little 20-year-old chick with fucking no wrinkles on her face. You think <laughs> Rollo wouldn't take? Shut the fuck up. I got I to gotta throw in some of his vocabulary. So, all right. The, we're in the Matrix. We're in the Manosphere. And that is the feminist propaganda matrix that uh, they're trying to convince us men to settle for dumpier women because the women are are steadily getting fatter and uglier and uh, they're trying to trick us into not having standards but you gotta break through that programming you gotta take the red pill to see that you have options oh. you can get a bitch but don't worry ladies this is not the first time he's driven a lambo Aping the Instagram post of hypergamy human thumb, Joe Rogan. Spending time with an effeminate looking homosexual dog. And most telling, LARPing as a hunter that doesn't appear to own any guns. In fact, closer inspection of his post reveals that Rollo wore his camo jacket out to go voting, likely for Hillary Clinton. No one thought to go to Rollo's Instagram, but that... That seems to be the most damning evidence we got. <laughs> Everything is just, he's hunting, but doesn't have any guns. He took a fencing class one time. He took a picture in front of some Lambos that he never seems to drive. It's just the complete <laughs> annihilation of this guy's life. Based what is he on... out there doing wearing hunting gear? Like, is he out hiding in the woods so he could admire elk from a closer I... distance? Like, that deer has a nice cock. <laughs> what the fuck is this guy doing? Look at the hog on that one. It seems that he's a woodsy guy that lives near deer and takes their pictures. But just based on looking at that screen right there, doesn't your mind automatically go to, oh, he's a hunter? And so it's like he's, I honestly believe that he's trying to pretend that he's a hunter. It is some weird, look, this is how you peacock, young men. This is what it looks like. But that's not what it, you're not doing it because you're not getting girls. You're not doing it to talk to girls. You're trying to facilitate this fucking weird pyramid scheme shit you got going on with your books and your YouTube donations and this your is, Patreon. You're grifting. This, this is what we talk about um, when we talk about LARPing. 
This is like that's the perfect terminology. But this is LARPing. Yeah, it's <laughs> guys, <LARPing. laughs> take a look. So just for the record, he wore a hunting jacket to go voting. This is a politician saying, like, look at what a salt of the earth guy I am. Because, you know, all of these pictures, they're not meant to be like something he set up. This is like just snapshots of his life. You know, every right. every moment of his life is just an action adventure love romance that's sprawling and unfolding before us. Look at all the cool shit he does. Fuck, he was uh, water skiing all weekend? Shit. Finally, I'd like to take a moment to look at Rollo's terminology and writing career. The Rational Mail is a book series born out of Rollo's blog splot in conversations in the manosphere. This community, when I when I discover a community like this, it's like picking up a... That's uh, Rex in the documentary. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh my God. What the fuck? Oh, you trolled the fuck out Wait, of me. Wait, where am I? You're, okay, you're I was like, all right, Rex, go ahead. Go ahead. I was gonna right. let Rex talk, and I realized right. that I got Ian tricked me. Rex oh, I didn't said see my something. Brother. I think it very well describes my thoughts on discovering the manosphere. So maybe rewind fifteen seconds. Uh, yeah, Rex go. perfectly said exactly what I would want to say. The Rational Mail is a book series born out of Rollo's blog splot in conversations in the manosphere. This community, when I when I discover a community like this, it's like picking up a rock and finding a fucking ant colony underneath it. And like, I wouldn't have known it was there, but I picked up the rock and now I'm grossed out by the maggots. Like, it just exists, you know? There's a lot of shit going on. But CO, you were saying it's like finding a nest. Like, we didn't just find a guy. This is uh, a whole cabal. If you can fucking tolerate how boring the guy is, Richard Cooper is, like, is way worse than Ross. Yeah, because he's almost, he almost sounds like he is aware that he's being scummy. And he has no qualms in being like, well, look, if you want me to help you, you've got to pay, you know, thousands and thousands. You can't even talk to me unless you make over 250K a year. It yeah, says that yeah. on his website. You can't yeah, even you, talk you... to him unless you make over 250K a year. That's what a fucking scumbag predator that Richard Cooper character is. And hold on a second. Uh, wait a second. Let me go back to Colt. Colt. Colt, listen, brother. This is a man's place. We don't read a book called The Rational Male because we're men, number one. And we don't believe in no fucking hypergamous nature shit, okay? This ain't the place, brother. If you want to be with men, you need to talk like a man. We ain't on no bitch shit, okay? We on some man shit over here. I just want to let you know. This ain't no fucking weak ass. Who, who the fuck going to put the word male a rational male on a title of a book anyway. Who the fuck gonna put the word male, a rational male on a title of a book anyway? And talk about a woman's nature. Fuck that. This is man shit over here. All right? So you need to take that book and burn it and go get EO's book and learn how to be a motherfucking man. But anyway, like I was saying real quick. Which is crazy to me because it's like how many people make 250K a year? That can't get bitches. Who makes 250K a year that can't get no bitches? It's like the Proud Boys. You're worse off for joining them. There is no redeemable aspects to it. I, I deject to you saying there's nothing redeemable about the Proud Boys. Yeah, they can also <laughs> dance. Yeah. Rollo's first book, The Rational Male, was published in 2017. The audiobook comes out to 14 hours and 20 minutes in length. This is not a joke. After I purchased his book, the algorithms on my phone began sending me advertisements for divorce proceedings. You started getting uh, divorce proceeding advertisements after you bought that book? That is 100% true. And as you're hearing how long these books are, keep in mind all of them were written since 2017. So this is a book a year. And listen to how long these books are. There's nothing Rolo says that couldn't fit on like an index card if you just <laughs> right. summarize. No, nothing he's ever said couldn't be a bumper sticker or like a blurb on Facebook. 
That's the thing. Like, and I tried telling him today. I tried telling him. I tried saying, "All right, Rollo, you've you've made your point. We got it. Time to move on." But he just, he's not about that life. Here's my problem with the cult, the Black Phillip, and all that shit. Right now, it's like it doesn't matter what the original point of it was. It's been corrupted so many times. They took a book called The Gift and they turned it into The Grift. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) His second book was called The Rational Male Volume 2 Preventative Medicine, which comes in at 8 hours and 50 minutes long. His third book published since 2017 is called The Rational Male Positive Masculinity, which comes in at an astonishing 23.8 hours long. So for a dude that gets some pussy, even if it's from his wife, this nigga has no free time. He's written a book a year. His last book, the audio book, is 23 hours long. The longest book ever written is the Mahabharata, and it's 80 hours long. He's a fourth of the longest book ever written. He wrote that shit down. And he's podcasting nine hours a week on a soapbox, hating these bitches with articles like he's fucking Alex Jones. And he writes blog spots. When the fuck is this dude ever in contact with another human being? I thought these books were overpriced at $25. When I tuned in earlier, he was getting donations for like $55, $99. People are throwing money at this dude for approval. You're mad at women for being phony, but you're teaching men how to be phony. And that's the red pill that equalizes the game? Is that what's going on here? We don't want to take any ground. We're just going to learn how to play their game. We're going to let them set the rules and the standards, and then we're going to learn how to operate within their matrix? Yeah, man, of course. And it's an ongoing education that you're going to have to pay for for the rest of your life because the world changes, and in like five years, you're going to need to know what Rollo says about that world. Right. You're going to need to know what a man 30 years your senior says about these young hoes. We were listening to Rollo's pay pigs last week talk on their own streams and shit, and they're running into problems like gays infiltrating their their community <laughs> and... And like, you know, trying to decide which real doll they fuck that day and shit. Like, these guys are fucking degenerates. Wait, what? What are, you, guys, what are you talking about? These guys, these young men who hang out and so suave in the in the manosphere, they're so focused Man. on men. They're so focused on men that they're having a problem where they're slipping into homosexuality. Right. And they're trying to figure out how to how to deal with that. And I, you were the guy that was telling him, show me the picture of the girl you left to go fuck a rubber doll? No, 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 no. I was the guy that was asking him why exactly this big talk community, you see a lot of gays and people coming out of the closet. Because oh, they're wow. gay? I listen to the whole stream, but wow, please speak on it. Because I've noticed that too. A lot of the PUA, you know, I've exposed the gay PUA network, the fake MGTOWs, uh, Space uh, and yeah. I got to the MGTOW universe is being <laughs> corrupted by homosexuality and AIDS. So what is the happened MGTOW was, people really just anti-gay? <laughs> I no, I think that. a bunch of gays saw a bunch of single angry men and they thought they could infiltrate to go get some dick oh, over there. Angry dick, yeah. And now the hetero virgins are like, why are all these gays here asking me for my phone number? <laughs> <laughs> And I've brought this point up to like it theory before, but like, you know, there's a lot of dudes fucking real dolls. Like, you know, they're fucking rubber dolls in your MGTOW community. He's like, listen, only about 30% of MGTOWs fuck rubber dolls. All right. I was like, what? The numbers are too high. That's a, yeah, that's, a that's not percentage. a good ratio at yeah, all. If, if, the, if the fucking tap water had like, you know, 30% fucking cyanide in it, would you drink it? You know what I mean? Like it, it's, it's just. If. If less than 1% of people fuck those dolls and 30% of your people are fucking those dolls, that's a fetish community. And we already had a run-in with that one MGTOW community before where it turned out they were all like jerking off in, in Discord rooms together and like listening to each other jerk off. So I hey, whoa, hear whoa, whoa, whoa. What I didn't go in there. <laughs> where, where was I? You really got to listen to the playbacks. Leave. Yeah, there was some server well, like a year ago people were talking about like someone came to us and was like yeah dude they're in there jerking off together and like listening to each other jerk off and it was like a bunch of MGTOW red pill guys 
And that's, that's that's what they're saying. Men go their own way. They they don't need women. They have sex dolls and each other. But it's there not are, gay though. There are movies where like you'll see a bunch of guys jerking off together. It was in my sex ed book as a kid. Like perfectly normal for guys to jerk off together. Yeah. Anyway, it's it's part of the culture, and these guys have taken what should be an experimental moment in a child's development, and they're doing this as adults. Like, no, we should we should keep jerking off together do they have a jerk off night where they're like honey it's guys night and they head out to the garage and they get out their porn every night's jerk off night they went their own way there is no honey to talk to that's despicable it it is (laughs) despicable and lichen you should be ashamed that you're a part of these communities because i come from the pua community i actually came from the mctaw community and while i was there you know like there was some cognitive dissonance going on with the message Eventually, what ends up happening, if you follow what they say, it's, it's got some subliminal homosexual undertones to it eventually at some point. So you can't just go and fuck dolls and not turn, turn out fucked up, you know? I don't know how they, how they explain this. Like, how are you supposed to be normal? How are you supposed to, like, stay straight? No, you're exactly right. Philosophy? You're exactly right. It's, I think I said it a little earlier. Like, if you're yeah. fucking a plastic doll, I mean, you... You definitely. Apparently, what I'm gathering is it's. A, I guess it's a thing in the MGTOW community. Oh, it's so gross to have sex dolls, and uh, it's turning people gay. Yeah, this is fucked up. It's a situation that everyone put themselves in that are over there, though. You're in. A, <laughs> you're hanging out with the guys that jerk off together. You didn't think something gay was going to happen eventually. Well, I can't believe this degeneracy is popping up around here. <laughs> I thought this is where straight men could come to jerk off together. If this is not enough Rolo for you, he also live streams for two to three hours at a time, offers private consultations, keeps up a blog spot, and takes on students for mentoring. Sorry, so- I got a, a a picture that I wanted to show off. <laughs> He's so masculine. He's like a Fortnite character. <laughs> Um, hypergamy is like a real concept like it wasn't him that fucking came up with that but hypergamy is an anthropology concept but he's changed the definition because he used this is pseudoscience he he never got his degree uh because quite literally he says his ideas were too radical for the classroom because he would learn something and then he'd raise his hand and be like oh is that why bitches aren't shit and then (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> we're talking about martin luther king shut up rollo um. <laughs> let's go over his scientology decoder ring horse shit and we'll get out of here ltr stands for long-term relationship smb sexual market value afc average frustrated chump ons one night stand dhv demonstrating higher value LDR, long distance relationship. JBY, just be yourself. The two terms that Rollo uses most often are AFC and hypergamy. AFC again is your average frustrated chump, something he definitely didn't steal from a black guy that he met at a bar one time. Hypergamy basically seems to mean that we all want to be with someone who's better than us rather than someone who is less than us. He's also known for coining what they call the shit test, something my friend Dante Nero claims as a Dante-ism. Yeah, a woman gives you shit to make sure you are the shit. Yeah. All of this has led to women referring to Rollo as a PLWCGLWTALTW pathetic loser who can't get laid without tricking and lying to women if you go back to those terms all of this basically just describes like his top questions this is basically like a most most asked questions and uh the ultimate advice the last term is just be yourself but what the fuck is the point of three three books a podcast and a consultation if all of that leads to just be yourself and why would he give that advice when he's posing in front of Lambos that aren't his and going to fencing classes just for selfies? Dressing up as a hunter to go vote for Hillary Clinton and stuff like that. Like, it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> yeah, he's the not being picture himself with the deer didn't all. even make any sense. 
Because like the deer was alive and it wasn't on the hood of his Lambo. He didn't even kill the deer. <laughs> Ian, where did you yeah, get what? the beige frequency uh, odd music? Yeah, uh, I need that music. How do you even find that? <laughs> so if you actually scroll down to the description, there's a link to it. Um, I googled sand music. <laughs> Desert music. <laughs> That's how easy it was. <laughs> it's a royalty-free desert song. Uh, click on it real quick just so we can shout out the actual channel. I was thinking it was like the music to like a Zelda background somewhere. So what's the right? name of that? <laughs> We're just going to let this run in the background for a bit. <laughs> Arabian music, <laughs> evening in the desert. <laughs> 122,000 views. This this song is more known for the Beige Frequency documentaries than it is on its own well, actual he, channel. He never uh, posts a link to the music. There's nowhere in the description of his videos where he's like, and here's the music I use. What a piece of shit. I fucking <laughs> hate, dude, I always hated Beige Frequency. I did a few appearances as a stand-up comic wearing a fedora. Hey, hold on. The guy with the Matrix stuff and the cheetah print guy, I hate them both. They both should be killed. Second off, the Matrix guy, is that Jim Renam? I'm sorry, I think that might be Jim Renam. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> we rediscovered. I'm an Asian guy and I'm a West Coast now. That's I right. think he's wearing a karate gi, too. Like, <laughs> he's dressed in wear... this Morpheus. Yeah, yeah. the training program. He's wearing a fucking a karate, karate. He doesn't have a Morpheus look to him. You think he does that on purpose because he's fucking offering you the pill? Yeah. Oh, oh my yeah. god. Oh my god. <laughs> That's why he has the Matrix he background. He's doing a literal meme of the Matrix with the red pill. Oh, this is great. These guys fuck. Let's be let's be clear. Cosmic. He he calls uh calls Neo when he's at his day job and he's like you see those two agents coming for you? They're HR agents. They're here for the sexual harassment. Duck down. No, hide under your desk. Go around. <laughs> Follow the white rabbit. <laughs> Wait, look, check this out. I don't, I'm not really sure the dynamics of this at all. This guy's name is Troy Francis, right? But this guy, old fucking Brock Lesnar over here, he's sitting in a building where the words Troy Francis are on the wall behind Mersh's lamp over here in the corner. Did we find the Mersh and Royce yeah. of yeah. Glove Gurus? This guy lives yeah. at Troy's house. The Chad is the good looking man or the Alpha, no, alpha is the good looking man. <laughs> Not always, but the, the, the good looking guy. These people is, see themselves as being alpha. below me. It's easier to be Alpha if you don't have... Um, Okay. I've never put okay. this thought into getting pussy. Like I've, I've never, never. Like I've never had to make charts or read books. You never had to sit day. in a group. You never had to sit in a focus group of ten people and and toss around ideas. Never. Get bitches. You should try first. But my gripe with the red pillars is that um, your advice hasn't updated in like twenty years. You're almost still giving out mystery method advice. You're saying, just be confident, bro. If you fail, you don't have enough game. Shit on this channel. You're not watching any of our stuff, dude. You don't know what the fuck you're talking okay, about. And you're only here. here, and you're only here to leech clout off of fucking Rolo for your insane. Oh, 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 whoa, 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 catty whoa. bitch over yeah, here in the matrix. I got, I got Morpheus. Yeah, Red to, Morpheus to, doesn't to seem too red pilled. Do these guys own mirrors? Do I hear a clout? <laughs> <laughs> it's that they just keep finding new ways to iterate the same things that you're just supposed to learn. Like being confident isn't old advice. That's the life lesson you're supposed to learn. Yeah. And these guys keep finding the most obtuse and fucking least helpful ways to lead someone down the path of becoming confident. None of these guys are even confident in any of their arguments. They're all pulling the lichen and just yelling over people. You're just here for clout. You just want some subscribers, bro. There's no way you could possibly you think that. You've never listened to us talk. You don't have a real opinion. You're scared of the truth, Rex. Oh, I got I went on to something else there. <laughs> I have a feeling these guys might actually get a bit more shit than we think they do because they seem <laughs> this seems to be a very stock reaction for uh, Morpheus.
Yeah, he's going right. into his playbook of like battling trolls and clout chasers. Tomasi, oh yeah, guys, uh, that's exactly what you hear. You, what's your gripe? You're saying we're telling people just be confident. I when the it. fuck did we? De- when the fuck did any of us say just okay. be confident, have, bro? Answer okay. have, right given, now. When was the last time any of us? Wow, does that sound familiar, Rex? Listen <laughs> to the way that Morpheus yeah. argues. I, like I don't it. understand being so in the game. Like, how much pussy have these guys got where now they have to take time away from getting pussy to educate others on how to get pussy? Like, this is their this is their mission. This is their mission statement. It's just so fucking gay. Well, how much pussy do you get for someone to be like, hey, you should say more than just being like, be confident for that to set you off. Like he didn't call him a nerd, didn't call him a gay, call him a loser. He just he just said he just said you need to do more than be confident. There was a very mature and helpful way you could have answered that if he was in the wrong. You didn't yeah, have to spurg out. You're dealing with an unsatisfied customer. He's like, "Listen, uh, you know, working out and being confident it hasn't worked for me. So now what?" Jen, I could summarize your advice as to be confident and be alpha. You're, you've you're got stupid. no. You're, you're stupid. You're fucking stupid, and you don't know what you're oh. talking about. My. <laughs> I kinda, easy liking. Yeah, I, I kind of. Mm-hmm. I'm almost having flashbacks at the moment. <laughs> My platitudes like- are guaranteed to work. Advice is summed up because everybody on this panel has fucking echoed it. Make money. Make muscles, learn. Gear. You deserve yeah. to be at the bottom. You deserve. If you're poor and fat and miserable in 2020, it is a thousand percent your fault. Because when did this come out? October 18th, 2020. Oh, God forbid you be broke during the end of the world. This guy, I need to look into. The uh, you have no dating. excuse. It's a hundred percent your fault. Yeah, your job got closed down. Did your did the person taking care of you die of a sickness? It's your fault. COVID Get your shirt. shit together. Clean up your room. COVID so so this guy's this guy's look and fucking personality and his obvious wealth. You know, with the mic arm that's the same as mine and his shitty costume he's wearing. Like this is this guy just gets pussy. I'm supposed <laughs> to believe that this guy just. He's, he's charming. The bitch. Oh, hell yeah. He goes out and he's a Go. fucking alpha. Wait, yeah. I want to just put out the bitch move that this guy named himself on this panel. Eat shit haters. Sounds like he's run into some criticism. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> these, these guys. <laughs> My guy in the middle was lint rolling his t-shirt on stream. Was he? <laughs> like that's oh, that's not, not true metrosexual. No, no, hold on, hold on. I'm not done. I'm not done. Troy, mute him. You, listen, you're gonna be muted if you don't shut up. Okay, so okay. shut the fuck up and listen. You're you're harping and you're blah blah blah. Like you know something. You don't know how to get laid. Your following is based upon your ignorance and your lack of understanding. And your life is a testimony to the lack of understanding that you have in the field of women. But you're so arrogant and you're such a narcissist that you have to take it to the Internet and be like, hey, guys. Let me show you guys why it's a it's a st- the deck is stacked against you and why it's impossible and you should give up. That it pretty much sounds like Rollo's advice. I haven't I don't know who this fucking face guy is that he's talking to, but Rollo's advice pretty much is there's no hope. The alphas are gonna get all the hot chicks because they're so ripped and attractive. So you might as well just follow a girl around. And sniff her panties until she's ovulating. And then if you're lucky, you maybe will get her to suck your dick. TRP analysis live stream. Did you so like the- that? Wait, hold on that verse, first video. Did you like that? Even though we haven't looked into it, you know, there's like more like break off universes. That one guy was like, uh, originally I was AWU, but yeah, now I'm Big Chow. <laughs> originally I was Alpha Mega Gamma, but now I'm Galpha Omega Z- Zima. Yeah, I was and... Alpha Omega Ball Cell. No. <laughs> Think about going back to MGTOW. Living in a delusion, feeding guys this lie that, oh, yeah, you can do it. But it, honestly, man, like, I feel like when you're in high school or middle school, you're already blackpilled. You already see, like, oh, the, the girl's like this guy because of his face. And then you lie to yourself. 
You know what I'm saying? Like this is fucking alcoholics this is, anonymous for fucking yeah. virgins. Like these, this is these guys are autistic. Mm-hmm. Like guaranteed. Like this is like a focus group. This is a hug box. This is a support group. This is where guys come to tell each other it's okay that they're fucking retards who haven't worked on their personalities or their communication skills to talk to people in general, let alone women. And nothing yeah. is gonna like they're gonna they're never going to improve in life. They're just gonna be on the internet for the rest of their lives, jerking off, you know, crying about not being able to talk to women. This is ridiculous. You realize at a young age that women are attracted to the guys with the cute face. I don't know. Are we? Why would you be bummed out about that at thirty-five? Yeah, yeah. It's all school shooter type energy. All remembering shit that doesn't matter. School is the um. Screws people out of the gene, the breeding pool. It gets rid of school. Is the ultimate incel killer. It it it, it immediately separates uh, Chad and superstar and football. You hung up on fucking high school insecure. Like you're hung up on shit. This guy's seventy. I remember him talking before. He was talking about cell phones in Vietnam being in a fucking suitcase. And this guy's talking to people that are like forty years younger than him about He's high school. Still out of high school, yeah. Yeah, this guy feels like he got cheated out of pussy for the rest of his life because of some shit that happened sixty years ago. This is like the problem with these people and school shooters. Like, if you've, you've ever listened to a school shooter manifesto, they'll ramble on about fucking elementary and shit. It's yeah. like the sad part about this is like. In a way, like, let's just say, like, there is, like, a natural hierarchy at high school. Like, naturally, there is. But afterwards, in your 70s, this man sounds, you're still you're still that beta nerd then. Like, you're always, if you, if you, if you continually go through life with that framework and your position in that framework, and that's the way you perceive the rest of the world, then that's what you're going to be. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's like you're telling yourself you're an animal every day. Then you're gonna act like an animal, you know what I'm saying? Like, damn, people move on, is what I'm saying. Like, what the fuck is like I don't even think about high school ever. You know what I'm saying? Like, why do these people care so much? I still want to know, Aranda, what what are your thoughts on the MGTOW, the red pill, the you know, is it a dangerous society that uh is like oh, a gateway drug to incel and uh you know the, the Elliot My Rogers, theory. or is it the future where men are gonna take the power back? What do you think? My thing with MGTOW, I, I call it men grabbing their own wieners. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Man, that's, that's what's up. Arana does Romo. not ever disappoint. Here's why I, call it. I know a lot of people. Look, look. Here, here's why I say that, and I know a lot of people are going to be pissed for me saying that. But None of us here will be pissed about it. it. <laughs> Hopefully, uh, Mr. Rana, are you aware that 33 percent of them have sex with rubber dolls? Of course, I of course I know that. No, that's the reason I can't support. That's common knowledge about the MGTOW. Of course, let me tell you why. Because the MGTOW community is just a bunch of whiners. All right. Yep. I have no problem with men who decide. Look, I'm not going to spend all my energy on women. I'm going to spend my energy on success. I'm going to spend my energy on making money and doing all this thing and losing weight. That's great. That's what I do. That's what all men should do. But the yeah, MGTOW right. people, they don't do that. When you look at some of these MGTOW forums, all, all it is is focusing on women and how bad women are and how unfair women are and how deceitful women are. And as a result, we're just not going to talk to women anymore. That's, that's what I get from the MGTOW community. They want to pretend that's like they don't care about that's women, right. but these brothers are the most horniest. They care more about women than anybody. These guys are just gateway incels. That's what I would. That's what I would say. MGTOW is they're they're incels, and they don't want to admit that they're incels. No, no, right. they're in, they're incels, and they want to pretend like they're not incels. That's the thing. They want to pretend sex doesn't matter. I can get it anytime I want. I'm just gonna focus. But they care. Otherwise, they wouldn't be talking about women every five seconds. They try so hard. They, so they want to pretend that they're big and bad. Ooh. In the women, end, it doesn't I'm... even matter, though. <laughs> oh, my. I can't believe my ears. 